Today's project is code.org, Unit 2, Lesson 6. So we're going to continue our learning uh, on our Games and Animations unit. And today we're going to be adding sprites, which are um, the little characters that we often find in games and such. So to get started, please go to Rapid Identity and find your code.org. Alright, now that you're inside <clears throat> excuse me, code.org, I'd like you to uh, make sure you're on the dashboard. Just say my dashboard up here at the top. And scroll down just a bit. You have a couple options. You can click on continue lesson and it should take you to where we left off last. In class we finished lesson five. If it does not take you to lesson five or you don't want to use this option, you can also go to view course. I'm going to show you on view course. We are in Unit 3, so at the top of the page it should say CSD Unit 3, Animations and Games, and we're going to scroll down to Lesson 6, Sprites. So go ahead and click on the bubble one. Just to make sure you're in the right spot, we want Lesson 6, Sprites to show at the top, and your bubble shouldn't be filled in just yet. As an overview, we're going to learn some more uh, details about games and animations using the sprite object and we're going to create a sprite and then we're going to attach an image to that sprite so it will show up with the character that you would like. Uh, we're going to use some new blocks. We'll have a yellow block called draw sprite and we'll have some pink blocks and some, um, some purple blocks. Click continue. And remember you can press pause at any time. So I would like you to watch this video on bubble number two. It's a nice introduction to sprites. Bubble number three, actually, so go ahead, press pause while you're watching that video and then come back to me on bubble three. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. It um, was a quick explanation of the animation tab that you're gonna be using. So here's another explanation. Uh, we're gonna be uh, designing our sprite in a window like this and you'll have your toolbox of code. Uh, for this first couple of lessons, you'll only have the yellow and pink sections. That's okay. And in order to make a sprite, you need to have these three different blocks every time. You'll need this purple pink one that's called var. That stands for creating the variable. Okay. And you'll give it a name. And then in the pink part, you'll put the X and Y position. So 200, 200, if, you're, if you remember, is in the very middle of the screen. The second block you have to have is the set animation block. And this block attaches a picture to your variable. So if you forget this pink set animation block, it'll just stay a square. An important note on these is the names right here in these first boxes have to match. Okay, so I like to keep variables easy and just give them a single name, like I would just call this bunny. Um, and then just make sure that they match. And then the third block you have to have is this yellow block. That's the block that actually tells the computer to draw the sprite on the screen. Okay, so you have to have at least three blocks. Now throughout this lesson, you're going to add more blocks to it, but at least this is your starting spot. But you can always come back to this bubble. This is bubble three. If your sprite is not working right, you can come back here and see what you're missing. All right, bubble four. On bubble four, we're going to start practicing using the variable sprite blocks. So at the top of all of these pages, it's really pretty clear what to do. It tells you, it shows you a picture of the block we're going to use, and it even uh, specifically tells you where to drag them. So let's look under where it says do this. This program includes comments that lets you know where to place code, but it otherwise is blank. So these gray blocks are just little comments to give us directions on where to place our blocks. So it says to add the variable sprite block under the comment creating sprites. Right now I can only see the world block, so I'm going to switch to the sprite section, and here's that block. So let's click and drag it underneath. And this yellow warning, we're going to ignore it for right now, but usually it means that there's a problem with our code. So for right now, we're just it's just telling us we haven't used it yet. So the second bullet point says to add a draw sprites block under the comment drawing. So here's the comment drawing. The draw sprites block is a yellow block, so let's go to that section of our toolbox and drag it over. Remember, all the blocks you need are in, to complete each bubble are in the toolbox. So 
So we've just dragged over two different blocks and let's click run. And right now we made our first sprite. Our sprite is just a simple square because we haven't attached any images to it yet. All right, and then over here in the directions, it shows you what your screen should look like. So if yours matches, well done, click finish. Bubble five, I'm not gonna show it on the screen just yet. Uh, bubble five, you are going to answer a question. You're gonna look at the code and decide which, um, which of the answers, I think it's A, B, or C, match the code. Then after you've guessed your answer, you can hit run. And it, if it's correct, well done. If it was not correct, don't worry, you won't miss any points. So bubble five, you're just guessing uh, which picture will match when you hit the run code. All right, bubble six. Now, again, remember, you can press pause at any time, or if you're confident you can just do this project without my help, go for it. This is just for those that would like a little help. Bubble six, we have a little bit of a problem. So this is a debug lesson, so we have to fix something. You're not going to enter any code or any, any new blocks. You're not gonna change any numbers. All you're gonna do is change the order. If you'll remember, uh, order matters when it comes to coding. So if we look at our lines, we have create a variable, we have draw sprites and create another variable. And if we look at the variable names, they have slightly different names. One is called left sprite, one is called right sprite. So let's click run and see what it does. Ah, so if we click run, instead of seeing two sprites or two squares, we only have one. We only have the left sprite. So what do you think you need to do in order to see both sprites? And the answer is you need to drag that draw sprites button down underneath. Okay. The, this yellow draw sprites draws the sprites on the screen. And so before, if you had a sprite that showed up afterwards, that means it wouldn't be drawn. Okay, so fix that, reset, run, voila. All right, bubble seven has a video. <laughs> bubble seven has a video. I would like you to pause uh, my instructions so that you can watch this video. It's really important because the next couple uh, bubbles are a little tricky. They're super fun and you get to be creative and design your own characters, but it, this video does help. So please pause me and come back to me after you've watched the video. All right, hopefully that video is done and you can go on to bubble number eight. All right, bubble eight is a description of the animation tab. So this is the tab where you are going to uh, customize your characters. To get to the animation tab, click on animation in the upper left corner. And these are all the tools that you will get to use. You have the draw tool. This draw tool, um, it lets you draw um, symmetrically on the page. You've got the paint bucket tool, you've got the eraser tool, shape tool, move tool. You've got all these tools down here. You can change the color, uh, you can flip things. Okay, so this is where you can really have some fun. Now, it will give us a few characters to start with, but you can also add more characters by clicking the plus sign. All right, let's get started with uh, move on to the next bubble. So scroll down and click continue. Let's get started on bubble nine. Bubble nine already has three blocks for you in here. And they're the three blocks we talked about, about in the beginning, the three that you have to have to make a sprite. We have our purple and pink one that's called variable. This is where you're making the variable and you're choosing its X and Y positions. You're also giving it a name. So this one is called cool sprite. And you'll notice, remember that camel case that uh, S is capitalized. The second block is set animation. This is the one that attaches a picture to it. Right now, alien is selected. And the yellow draw sprites block allows it to show up on the page. So let's click run and see what you have. There you go, you have this little alien at 300, 300. If you put your cursor down there, you can see um, his position. All right, we're going to change it to a different character. So find the little drop down arrow and instead of alien, let's choose bunny and click reset run. And then fly bot, reset run. Now these sprites are pretty cute, but I would like you to customize one of them. So to get to the animation screen, you're gonna come up here to the upper left corner and click on animation. 
This is going to take us to that different area that we saw in the video and that we saw in bubble 8. All right, we have our alien, we have our bunny, and we have our flybot. I would like you to spend a, a couple minutes customizing these guys, or if you don't like any of those characters, you can choose the plus sign and choose from the library. So go ahead and choose it. You can choose any animal you like, but I would like you to spend a few moments customizing it. So you can use the draw tool. And add eyelashes or accessories or change the color. Uh, you can use the symmetrical, the mirror pen tool. And that will mirror your images on either side. I think that's fascinating. Okay, you can change the color altogether. As Choose the color down here at the bottom. I hope you can see that on your screen. And look at any color that you like. And then you can fill it in. A, a purple crab. Who would have thought? All right, so make it, take a few moments to customize your animation. Feel free to pause me while you're doing that. Okay, hopefully you've had a couple minutes to uh, customize your character. We're now going to go back to our code area. So in the upper left corner, we're going to click on code. And now in our set animation block on line two, I would like you to find the character that you customize. So I customize this crab. Click run. And there my crab is. Go ahead and hit finish. And go to bubble 10. All right, bubble 10, we're going to adjust the directions a little bit. Uh, the purpose of bubble 10 is to show you that you can download an image from online um, and load it into code.org. But working on your Chromebooks, this part is going to be a little tricky. So uh, instead of downloading a picture for a kite, let's go ahead and hit run so you can see what I mean. This is supposed to be a kite image. Instead of using a, a kite image from online, let's just find one that, um, from the animation tab. So would you go to the animation tab again, choose the plus sign, and then you can choose whatever type of kite. Do you want your kite to look like an animal or a vehicle or a character or food? Uh, go ahead and choose, uh, choose any one of these categories. And each one of these categories often has multiple um, screens. So look for the numbers in the top right corner. Like, for example, generic items has four screens. I think I want to have mine be a game controller kite. All right, so go ahead and pick an image. If you need a few moments to pick it, go ahead and pause this video. When you have your image, I'd like you to go back to the code screen, on the code screen. Now, if you'll remember, every sprite needs a purple pink block that says needs a, another pink block. We have to add a pink block that attaches the, the character, the, the animation. So we're going to go to the pink sprites section and find the one called sprite.setAnimation. We're going to drag that over. Okay, and kind of remember that these pink blocks like to be near each other. It's nice to keep those together. All right, the first thing we're going to do is make sure the names match. On line two, it's called kite, and on line three, it's called sprite. We need to match. So let's make line three say kite. And we're going to choose from this drop down the picture that you picked in the animation screen. So I chose video game controller. You pick whatever you chose and click run. Now instead of that gray square we have the image because we added the set animation block. Think of it as attaching a picture. Right? Set animation is attaching a picture. All right. Please click finish. And we're on bubble 11. 
Bubble 11, we're going to add a new block called the Sprite Scale block. So in the directions it says uh, the program already includes our image that we added on Bubble 10. Now we're going to add a new block called Sprite.Scale. Now it's a Sprite block, so what section in the toolbox do you think we should go to? Sprites. So find the one called Sprite.Scale, and we're going to drag it up next to our other pink blocks. Okay, and I hope the first thing that you notice is that the names don't line up. These names have to match exactly, so let's change the name to match. And it doesn't give us any clue up here what kind of numbers to put in for the scale. So what should we start with? How about we start with a 2? Let's see what happens with the 2. It got bigger. Okay. Let's start with a 5. Now let's It got huge. So you'll notice that this is actually a multiplier. This is a multiplier. So if you want it to be larger, you put in a whole number. If you want it to be smaller, put in a decimal. So let's pretend we want our kite to be half as big as the original size. Let's put in 0.5. And that is a tiny little kite. So you choose the number that works best for your kite. For my game controller kite, I think I'm going to do 1.5. All right. So now we've added a new sprite block called Scale. All right. Hit Finish. Bubble 12 is another question to answer. You're going to line up the code with the, with the picture that you think it will show. But I'm going to go quickly because um, I don't want to show you the answers there. So go ahead and pause me while you're working on bubble 12, lining up the code with the pictures. All right, hopefully you've got those answers correct on bubble 12, and now you're on bubble 13. So bubble 13, we've got a couple new blocks, but now they're blue. We're going back to the blue blocks. We have one called the background block. Remember that from a previous lesson, and we have a text block. The text block it simply adds a text. So in the do, do, do this direction box, it says to change the text. So you can change it to whatever words you want, as long as it's appropriate. And then after the text are two numbers. Those are your X and your Y position. Okay? And the X and Y position starts on the left side of the text. Okay? So we're going to add a second text to write in a different part of the screen. So you look at it, it's blue, so we have to go to the blue drawing section, find another text bo block. Oh wait, there's a couple. This one says text string and this is text size. We want the text string, so let's drag that over and then type a new phrase in this one. And I would like you to change the X and Y position. It defaults to 0, 15, which is going to be way up here in the upper left corner. Pick a different spot. Let's say I'll make mine. Remember, put your cursor anywhere on the screen and it tells you the X and Y spots. I'll make mine 200, 250. But you can put yours anywhere on the page. All right, so you should have your two now we're going to do a couple extra things. The block, um, the directions don't say to do this, but I would like you to because you might notice that the text is very small. So would you find the text size block in the blue drawing section? And we're going to drag that over to our workspace, line two. Just like choosing color has to come first, text size has to come first. So to help me, would you make yours a little bit bigger? I think size 20 should be the minimum size block. Now for extra credit, if you want to make it even more unique, you can drag over a fill block. What color would you like to fill your text? So instead of having just plain black text, you can make it a color. I'm going to make mine magenta. Okay, so bubble 13, go ahead and press pause if you need to to update yours. should have two text blocks. 
a text size, and a fill. When you're done, click finish for bubble 14. <laughs> All right, bubble 14 is our challenge. We have to debug this one because when we click run, the items are in the wrong order. If you look at your left-hand preview screen and compare it to the directions, they don't line up. We want our snake to be behind the rectangles and the word greetings to be on top. So in bubble 14, we're not changing any numbers. We're not adding any new blocks. We're simply changing the order. So how about we start with the text? We want the text to be on the top. So if you want something to be on the top, that means it has to be drawn last. The last thing that's drawn ends up on the top. So let's go find our text. Here's our text greetings, but we have to look carefully because this text greetings and the two blocks above it are related, fill black and text size. So just like we did in class, we're gonna click a little bit off to the right and drag so we can select those three blocks and we're gonna drag them to the bottom. This will make them drawn last and appear on top. Okay, we're almost done. Now the last thing we have to do is take our snake and he has to be drawn behind the rectangles, which means we want him to be drawn before the rectangles. So the yellow block determines the, the snake. So if we want the snake to be drawn before the rectangles, what line should you move this yellow block to. I'm not going to tell you. This one you're going to figure out. So move this yellow one so that and then hit reset run so the snake is behind the gray rectangles. Go ahead and pause me so you can figure out which line draw sprites should be moved to. Hopefully you got that figured out. I will be checking and go ahead and hit finish to take you to bubble 15. All right, bubble 15, it's time to start thinking about your own scenes. Um, we're going to be making your own scene. So it, throughout these lessons, you've seen some existing scenes, like, for example, the kite scene has the grass in the sky, the snake scene. Uh, a scene is just a combination of shapes and sprites and text to kind of um, tell a story. So uh, in this bubble 15, normally in class, we'd have a moment to kind of sketch it out. But uh, if you have a paper nearby or something, you're welcome to kind of draw a scene ahead of time. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples of students' work in the past. All right, so here's a scene that someone did. We have the flower. We've got the rectangle at the bottom that serves as the grass. We have the circle that serves as the sun. And they pick two sprites, a flower sprite and a bee, and then their text. So that's a nice little scene. Here's another scene. We've got a rectangle down below with the grass and the text. And then this student used four different sprites, actually five. They, they started with the circle shape and then added it to make it look like a sun. Kind of cute. And we've got another scene here. We've got the background that looks kind of like a farm. We've got a couple ellipses to look like the sun and the clouds and some text. And then this last scene, this is an underwater scene. So we've got a rectangle for the ground. We've got circles for the bubbles and a couple of fish and some grass. So hopefully those gave you some ideas of scenes that you could do. Uh, you could do an outer space scene. You can do a park scene, a house. Um, you can get kind of creative. So in the next bubble, we're going to go ahead and hit um, run. Here's the, um, on bubble 15, an example of the outer space one. Let's hit <laughs> go to bubble 16. We're going to build your scene in three steps, okay? bubble 16 and 17 and 18. On bubble 16, we're going to start with your background block. So if you'd like an outside scene, maybe choose a light blue. If you would like a space scene, a dark blue or a black. So let's choose a background color. And it tells you right here under do this. You use a background command, which is in the blue section. I think I'm going to make a space scene. So go ahead and you, but you do not need to follow me on this one. You can make your own unique scene. Click run. All right. 
And also on this, on this bubble, bubble 16, we're going to add shapes. So you need to have a minimum of two shapes. So it could be two rectangles, or it could be two circles, or ellipses. Uh, you decide, but ha you have to have at least two shapes. So I'm going to start with a circle, aka ellipse. And I think I want my circle to look like I'm on the moon. So I'm going to make it show up at the bottom. So my x is going to be 200, my y 400. And we need a color. I forgot my fill. So let's make a fill block before your ellipse. Let's see if gray works. Okay, so that is going to be like the moon. I'm going to Make it come down a little. Not that number. Hit reset run as many times as you want until it looks just the way you don't want it to look. And I'm going to do another circle far away like it's the earth, I think. So for your scene, you're picking two different shapes. Doesn't matter. Um, it does not have to match mine. You don't have to do a space scene. Okay, let's get big. So we want my Earth to be here. Okay, mine's acting a little crazy. I'm gonna refresh my page. If it ever doesn't let you type in, just go ahead and hit that refresh button. For your first set of numbers, just kind of guess and then see if it works. Oh, that looks pretty good for Earth. But instead of yellow, I'm going to make it blue. Okay. So bubble 16, you need a background block and you need at least two shapes. If you're doing an outdoor scene, maybe you want a rectangle for the ground. Or if you're doing a house scene, you can make a big rectangle for that building. Or you could pretend like you're inside a house and put a rectangle for a window and maybe a, another rectangle for a couch. So your scene can be whatever you like it to be. But go ahead and press pause on me while you finish your background and at least two shapes. When your background and your shapes are done, click finish, <laughs> 17. All right, bubble 17, it's time to add or create your sprite images in the animation tab. So now we get to create some new characters for your scene. My scene is in outer space, so it makes sense for me to have some outer space characters. Um, go ahead and add whatever characters you would like for your scene. And go ahead and um, you can press pause on this while I'm doing it, or you can kind of watch me build mine if you want at the same time. That's totally up to you. Let's go see if we have any. Ooh, these monsters are fun. I'm going to use this purple monster. I'm going to use the search function. Is there any rockets? Oh, maybe a spaceship for him. All right, I like this little guy, but I'm going to change the color of him. Change the color of his rocket. Feel free to customize your sprites. If you wanted to, you could also use some background sprites.
Oh, I kind of like this space one. I think I'm going to add that. All right, I'm going to look at my names. My names are a bit long over here, so I'm just going to shorten them up. If you're still working on your sprites, please pause me. If your sprites are done, we're going to go back to the code menu. All right, now here's where we have a lot, some blocks to remember. For every sprite, there's a minimum of, th of three blocks that we need. So I'm going to go to the sprites menu. And I like to have these sprite creation ones at the top. So I'm going to bring over this top one that says variable sprite. And I'm going to bring over sprite set animation. All right, so the first sprite I'm going to include is my monster. So I'm going to name it monster. Give it a name that makes sense. And after you've named it in both of these boxes, click the drop down arrow and choose the animation. And then we need our yellow draw sprites. I want mine to be drawn at the end, so he's on top of everything. So I'm going to bring that yellow one at the bottom. All right, let's see what we have so far. There's our little monster. He is huge. So I need to use this scale block. So I'm going to drag over this sprite scale block, rename it so it matches, and I would like to make him half as big. So I'm going to put 0.5. There he is. Now I think he's standing a little high, so I want his Y number to come down to about 320, I think. So I'm going to go back to my sprite, 320. Maybe that's too much. There we go. Sprite is added. You need to have at least one sprite, but if you're like me, uh, I wanted in a couple extra. So I'm going to drag over another purple pink block. This one is for the ship. So I'm going to name it ship. And I want the ship to be off to the side here. So that looks is around 50 and the Y is around 330. And then I'm going to drop down, choose my ship. Hmm, the ship is a little small. So I think in this case, I want the ship to be a bit bigger. So drag over the scale block, change the name to ship. Let's try doubling it. A little crowded. Maybe I should move them all over to the right. So you'll notice I'm making small variations as uh, as the scene comes together. It's okay if you change the position of your sprites. There we go. And feel free to press pause whenever you're working. Uh, if you need to pause me and, and keep working. I'm going to pause right now. I think I've got what I want. I've got my monster. I've got my moon. Actually, I think I'm going to grab one more shape to make this look more like Earth. I'm going to add in another ellipse. Maybe a green one this time to look like land. Let's make our width small. I want our width to be kind of small and our height. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks crazy. Oh, I changed the wrong number. That's why. So I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times. I changed the size of that one. I meant to change it down here. Maybe I'll make one more funny shaped ellipse to look like Earth. And 
And you might notice that my little green earth blocks, they have a black line around them. That's called the stroke. So I'm going to bring over the no stroke so that they don't have that border. There we go. Look at that. That works just fine. Maybe I'll move over my first one up just a smidge. All right, there we go. It kind of looked like a continent. Feel free to work on your own sprite. You can press pause if you need to, or if you have your sprites already added, you can move on to the last bubble. Just to clarify, you should have a background, you should have at least two shapes, and at least one sprite or character. All right, on the last bubble, you are going to add some text. Scroll up. So let's go to the drawing tab and I want you to bring over a fill block and a text size block and a text string block. What would you like the color of your font to be? I'm going to make mine white. You can choose whatever color you like. A minimum on the text size is 20, please. That's so I can see it. And your X and Y, figure out where would you like your X and Y to show up. My monster's kind of in the middle. Maybe I want it to be right here. Whatever your text could be something that your character is saying. It could be a title for your scene. There you go. So I made mine say almost home. Feel free to pause if you need to, but again, for complete points on this, you need a background, at least two shapes, a sprite character, and some text. So I hope that these directions helped you complete Lesson 6, Sprites, and check next week for the directions for the next lesson. Thanks for listening. Na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey. Goodbye.